the Abundant Harvest Homestead. A lot of activity going on around here. You probably hear a ton of insects and probably some homestead animals. But today I wanted to talk to you about something that could change everything. It has changed so much for us. It could change a lot for you. And really it could completely change this world if people were allowed to do this. Some places they are. And if you have the freedom to, I would recommend it. And part of it is just shifting your mind. It's a paradigm shift. Um, wow, it's taken me a while, but I'm glad I got where I am. And here's the deal. Have you ever thought and considered that if you eat something today or tomorrow, maybe drink something today or tomorrow, and nothing kills you, you're going to live to see another day. Life is not actually that difficult. So how did it turn into this giant mess that we're dealing with these days? The kind of status quo from the time you're 5 to the five, time you're 18, go to public school. From the time you're you know, 18, 19 to the time you're like 22, go to college. Then from the time you're 22, 23 to the time you're 65, work, work, work. And then if you're not dead yet, maybe enjoy a couple years. How did it turn into that? Well, I'm going to show you something that could help change everything for you. There's a lot of issues in the world. There's a lot of agendas being pushed. There's a lot of uh, fear mongering going on and people, oh no, there's gonna be an ice age. Oh no, the ice caps are gonna melt. Oh no, everything's gonna flood. Oh no, it's gonna be acid rain. Oh no, the world's gonna be dead in a couple years. Oh no, it's the ozone layer. Oh no, we gotta be really, really green. Or everyone's gonna die. Oh no, we gotta have electric cars that are powered by coal. <laughs> power companies, power plants. Otherwise, everything's going to be terrible. Well, guys, check this out. I want to let you know that this could change so much of your existence. Honestly, it's changed a lot of mine, and we're still in the process of, of getting as much as we possibly could out of here. But really, this is like an animal seed, and I'm going to use the Muscovy duck as an example. And I want you to think about this. And again, I'm just using one animal as an example, but there's so many different animals that this is true of in different ways, but there's a lot of overlap and it changes everything. It could change the world. So allow me to start by first introducing you to the Muscovy duck. It's a type of duck, but it's a tropical type of duck. It's native to pretty much the Southern United States, Mexico, and then down through Central America into South America, all the way down to like Argentina. These days, it's been introduced to a lot of places around the world and there's feral, you know, colonies of it established, Australia, the United States, many parts of Europe. And it's a rather common uh, homestead animal. Some places you do need special permits. Some places it's considered invasive. Um, Although it's a tropical duck, it can really do well in the wild. And one reason that we like them is that they can take care of things on their own. They can breed on their own. They can lay eggs on their own. They can go broody on their own. They can raise their young on their own. And really with minimum interaction from us, 
they can thrive in a lot of situations. The ducks start out as eggs and a female can lay up to about 190 eggs in a year. So if you have some of these and you think of for each female you could be getting up to 190 eggs per year, that's pretty cool. I'll get into some of the diet and why we really like them and how good of a forager they are in a bit. But if you're looking for something that can give you eggs and you're not beyond eating duck eggs, which many people like for things like baking and other things, these guys can crank out quite a bit of eggs. A lot of times, if you have males with the females and they're breeding, once you get about 8 to 16 eggs, sometimes maybe up to about 30, they're going to start going broody and sitting on them. And they can do this three to four times a year, which can really print out a lot of new ducks for you every year. In about 30 to 35 days, what you're going to find is that the ducklings hatch. And these ducklings are pretty cute. They're rather almost indistinguishable from other species of ducks in the fact that they don't have their red kind of waddles and the red part of the face that they mature to have. But when they're young, you know, they're super cute. And a lot of them can get printed each year just by having some males and females. And they can reach sexual maturity in less than 30 weeks. They do incredibly well at providing for themselves, both on land and in the water. They're omnivores, so they'll be eating both little bugs, maybe aquatic things like crayfish. Um, they'll eat minnows. They'll eat other things running around, lizards or different things. But then they'll also feed on vegetation, some aquatic vegetation, and then some stuff on land. Um, to a certain degree, they can kind of even almost weed a garden if they prefer the weeds that are growing over the plants that you have planted. So if they have open opportunity to forage, they can do really well in providing for themselves. And one thing that we really like is how good they are at eating flies and other bugs. They really cut down on a lot of pests on our homestead because they're eating them. And from a very young age, those things that are tinier than them, they love to chase down and hunt. I've seen them run across fields chasing grasshoppers. They'll gobble up all sorts of bugs. And they're really good at providing for themselves. If you don't want to be spending much on feed, I know one thing that I like to do is give them the extra bait that I bring back from fishing. If I go on a fishing trip, bring back some extra minnows or worms, they will gladly gobble them up. Also, kitchen scraps and things that you could compost or give to the dog or give to some of your other animals, they will gladly eat as well. So even without buying a lot of feed for them, if you're creative in what you provide for them, and if you give them the opportunity to do a bit of free ranging where they can provide for themselves in the woods or in the pastures or in a pond or a stream, they're gonna do rather well of feeding themselves and dropping how much investment you need of food to provide them. Moreover, they're a pretty good meat bird. I like them because it's a very lean meat um, at first, they kind of taste like a duck, but they say that as they age, they kind of go through some flavor changes where after a couple years, the meat becomes almost more like venison, like deer meat. We like that here, and we've eaten some of our older Muscovies and definitely enjoyed the way that they tasted. And if you let them get a little older than that, people even say it tastes more like roast beef. And some of the ones we've had, both in the slow cooker or the oven or the smokehouse, we've definitely appreciated the meat that they give us. Now the females max out at almost seven pounds and the males will get more than double that at up to about 15 pounds. So that's a pretty hefty bird and they really do provide some good meat for us. Another thing that we like is, you know, their poop. In the pen I have them in right now, there's actually a number of fruit trees. So their manure is a high nitrogen manure that works out good for a fruit tree. The rain helps it seep down into the soil and then it feeds the tree better, which gives them shade and then gives us food like peaches, plums, other ones. This one here is actually a hybrid. I think it's a blue Swedish mixed with a Muscovy and they can interbreed with the other kind of the mallard type ducks, but they make a sterile offspring. So that's one way that they don't really get to reproduce, but they can still lay eggs and they can still go broody. This one hatched out these guineas for us, and we like that too because 
she's a really good mother. She can't really have her own babies because she's sterile, but she can raise another type of poultry. And if they're raised together too, a lot of our poultry gets along really well together. So the interesting stuff about these guys too is they're a rather quiet one. You hear some insects in the background, you may hear the guineas, you may periodically hear some chickens, but these Muscovies, they may hiss, they got a couple noises they make, but they're really quiet. So they're not bad to fit into a lot of settings. If you can have something like this where you are, with just a couple males and females, you could be getting fertile eggs. If you only want the eggs, all you need is a couple females, and very quietly, with doing some good lawn care, you know, because they'll be eating the things in the yard and they'll be eating the bugs, they'll be fertilizing as they go, they can provide you with a good amount of eggs on a yearly basis. And then if you have some males in the mix, they can be having out the little babies. Now the babies are a little louder because they got their cute little baby voices calling for their mama and stuff and running around kind of pipping, but they're not exactly a nuisance bird like some would be. A lot of people don't like guineas because of how loud they are. A lot of people, even where they can have hens, aren't allowed to have roosters because of how loud the roosters are. I know a lot of people talk about roosters, you know, at the crowing at the crack of dawn, but they crow way before that. And if you're somewhere you can hear them, they make a lot of noise. So even a lot of cities where you can have hens, they don't allow you to have roosters, which means you can't have fertile eggs, which means you can't be hatching out your own chicks, which means you can't be having a regenerative, you know, printing press of meat on, on your property. I like these because they do it a little more quietly. And again, there are some rules and regulations different places, but if you can have them, I think they're a great option. They do come in a variety of colors, and one thing that helps us do is identify who's who, and it allows us to see uh, kind of which one we've had for how many years, and who's the mother of who, and stuff like that, so that makes our life a little easier. Here's a nice brown one. Is she a mother? Um, no, but she's going broody. She's going broody right now, and soon she'll have her own chicks. You can hear one of those being a little noisier right now. And this one they say is going to turn out to be brown when it gets bigger. You can see it's lacking the red wattles on the face and stuff. So it looks more like a regular duck. Some of them look like the uh, ducks on the dawn dish shelf is what my children say. But these guys, super cute. And if you think about them hatching somewhere between about 8 and 30 at a go sometimes if all their eggs hatch, um, a lot of little cuteness around. This one here has more of the dawn dish shelf type duckling look to it and uh, we like the variety that we get knowing that this one in the future is either going to be breeding some and then providing us meat as a big old male or getting bred and providing us with eggs and then hatching out some more eggs and making the next generation it really makes life work pretty awesome around here when this one was a baby it looked like that last dawn disc soap one and this is another young mother we definitely appreciate her and they can even hatch out other eggs. This is an example of what a bigger male looks like. All the little babies you've seen in this video are his offspring. This is Big Tex. When we got him, he was just an egg that was shipped to us, but we hatched him out and raised him up, and now he's siring the rest of the flock. We have another large male on our homestead now too, who is actually this guy's son, and he would have hatched out last fall? Yes, sir. He hatched out last fall, so he's able to now be siren as well and breeding the females. And a bird this big can definitely put some meat on the table. They also come in a white, both as young and as adults. And uh, this one here is this one's baby. Cute little duckling. You guys can go. So why do I say that this could change everything? Why do I say that this could change the world? Because if people we're given the opportunity to take stewardship of a property where they're able to do what they want to with it, then they could be having animals like that. And again, they're not very loud, they're rather quiet. And they do really well at feeding themselves if they're given the opportunity. And if you trim one of the wings, you know, and have a fence, they're not gonna be escaping and flying away, winding up in other people's yards, or, uh, you know, getting released into the wild and setting up an invasive feral population. They do really well at these things. Also, they do really well at breeding and reproducing and going broody and hatching out their own babies and then taking care of them. So these days, a lot of people are concerned about food. 
They're concerned about that. Why? Because as I said, we need to kind of eat something today or soon or we're going to die. Just like we need to drink something maybe today or soon or we're going to die. If we can avoid those things, something needs to kill us to really take us out of this world. So it makes life really easy if we have something available to eat. These guys can provide so much. They have the eggs, which are a potential food source. And if we hatch them, they make male and female ducks. You only need one male to a couple of females, but if you only have one and he dies, then you got an issue. So we always try to have at least two males, but the extra males then can be eaten as a food supply too. Again, if they're feeding themselves and growing that big off of mostly wild stuff in which you're actually investing them of table scraps and some duck feed, not going to be that big of a deal. And the return on the investment can be really big when you let these things grow up. We have taken stewardship over more and more of our own food supply each year because we trust us a lot more than we trust the big corporations, than we trust the supply chain, than we trust the government. So it's important to us. And also, I think that if people are using their freedom, exercising their freedoms in areas where they have it, then it's harder for you to lose your freedom. If you don't use it, you lose it. If people across the uh, you know nation in cities would have all had, all had their own little flocks of poultry, and all had their own little you know gardens and stuff, and not gone for things like zoning laws and rules and regulations and homeowners associations and all these extra things oppressing your freedoms, then people would still be free to do this all over the place. But a lot of people are simply not. If you have the opportunity, I would highly recommend it. And you know, maybe it's not Muscovy Ducks for you. This was just one example of how a lot of our life has changed because of a simple egg, because of a couple birds on our property. Somebody originally gave us three Muscovies. They gave us a male and two females. And since then, for the past like six years, we've always had Muscovies. We haven't needed to buy anymore. They just keep reproducing. Sometimes you can get some gifted, sometimes you can trade some stuff, but we haven't needed to buy anymore. We just provide them with food or the opportunity to feed themselves and we provide them with water and they continue to run. So we have potentially decades worth of food with just the Muscovies we have here. And when my children grow, if they want to continue on in a similar lifestyle, we can specifically print up some and keep some extra ones that we're not eating, you know, so we can have our two males here and send them away with two males and a pile of females, you know. Plan for that future. If they move somewhere, they're able to exercise this freedom and enjoy something like this. Tell you what, I like eating. I like eating good food. I like eating food that is homegrown and home raised. And I like being able to pretty much come out at will and have as many eggs as I want. Or choose to let them go broody and have more ducklings. Now that we got a smokehouse, you know how easy it is not to have extra animals running around your homestead? So much easier because the extra ones get put right in there and that kind of streamlines, streamlines the process for us a bit. Makes us run a little more efficiently. So again, think about the power of the egg. Like I said, it's pretty much a seed for an animal. And if you're able to make your own, boy, you could have a lot of animals. You could have a lot of eggs. You could have some of that weight that this world is putting on your shoulders right now lifted by the wings of the poultry. Muscovies are just one example, but they work out really well for us. And as I said, a lot quieter than some of the other ones. I'll see you next time. Pop out. That's good, you know.